So let's move on. What do we have? We have this. We stop the music. Hello, chess fans. My name is Rafael Leite. I'm from uh, Canal Xadrez Brazil. It is the one of the main uh, chess streaming channels uh, on YouTube in Brazil. Okay. Uh, so sorry because my layout uh, elements are in Portuguese. Uh, but uh, what I bring to you is a really, 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 really a strong evidence that uh, Hans Niemann has cheated uh, since. 2018. Uh, so uh, I've been working okay. hard, really, really, really hard uh, the last weeks, uh, trying to find and trying to put some light and some science uh, into this question. So like, I've, I mean, I've heard people say things about like 2020, but you're saying 2018. Huh. Been through okay. the Yosha analysis and many, many uh, analysis on Reddit and many other stuff. And uh, what I found out is that everybody has contributed some way to go um, in uh, a direction. And uh, so I'm going to show you the direction that I took. And thank okay. to my subscribers and thank to the people that uh, was showing me some aspects and giving me some suggestions well, 15 minutes and okay. telling me, uh, look Listen at this way, that. try to calculate yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I think I can so speed it up, right? So everybody together, uh, we, we together as a whole, uh, then we, we could be able to uh, produce this analysis that I'm going to show you. Uh, so man, most of you don't know me. So uh, just quickly, my background. Uh, I play chess since I am 14 years so old. Allowed. I am a chess.com rated 2200 player. So I'm a strong amateur. And uh, I really um, cover everything now, right? about chess since now. 2018 in my YouTube channel. And I'm also a programmer, a developer, and a data scientist. So I'm using all those skills together to try to figure out um, and to try to bring some light to this uh, uh, Hans Niemann's cheating uh, scandal controversy. Okay, so uh, first of all, I want to say that I've, I have never been um, uh, with any tendency or uh, I, will, okay. I will try to show that he's innocent or I will try to show that he's guilty. I am completely uh, uh, apart from those tendencies. What I want is to bring some light using science. Okay, and then that's what okay. I'm going to show you now. First of all, uh, I have um, made this script oh, and this Let script me, um... is available here in the description of the video. Um, the link is in the GitHub and it is, it's already, uh, it's actually working right now, this script. And what it does basically, uh, it uh, uh, I, I I input I use as an input for this for this algorithm I use all the database from a player so for example now it is this is running uh, to Eric Eisen. I mean I don't know you guys you tell me I mean obviously now I'm covering with my chat with with the chat but this looks this he said it's on GitHub right so this is actually out there right this this is actually out there right if I understand it. Okay, but I have run this for uh, Hans Niemann, for Gukesh, and I'm running for many others. Okay. And basically what this is scripted is, it, it's, it yeah, takes yeah. every, mm -hmm. every, every game from this player. Actually, for example, yes, you are right. It and is then Python. it takes every, every, every move he makes and calculates the difference okay. between yeah. Engine, the PGN. best move that Stockfish, the main chess computer algorithm that exists, using neural networks. Okay, If, it, if, it's, so on, this uh, if, it's, if it's on a public GitHub, then yes, what's his username? Um... I, I mean, I, I don't know, but you guys can tell me, but anyway. Suggesting this move with this evaluation. And now I compare with the move that has been actually made by that player. And I calculate okay. the difference, okay, of evaluation, every move. And this is called the centipound loss, centipound loss. Okay. So this is the name. So uh, we calculate this. I think this is the, the one they were doing something before with, with uh, the Ukrainian guy who did something. I think it was the same thing, right? It was like centipede loss, as I recall. Uh, centipound is the scale where we measure the evaluations of the position. And the loss is because you can always, uh, you can never make a, a movement that you will win some points against the computer evaluation. Sometimes maybe um, it can happen, but it's not a, it's oh, not a usual. Uh, but uh, yeah. uh, mainly yeah. that's what it means. You are, you will do the best move, which is centipede, the computer move, yeah. or you will do some move that is inferior. Then you will be losing okay. uh, those centipons. Okay, so basically that's it. Keep going. And I calculate the loss uh, of the centipon data. for every move in the in that player career okay okay, okay. so for every game every game so uh, thousands ah, of so games this is important so he does every game he does not do like uh, he does not cherry pick actually this is important to know because a lot of stuff that's been done it's like people are cherry picking it's like you take like last two years you take like last year as opposed to the as opposed to everything so this is actually important to note that he that he takes every single game and or at least thousands he of he moves okay 
and this is analyzed move by move. And then uh, what do we do? We get the average and also the standard deviations. So I'm going to show you um, what what we're talking about. So let me open here. Ah, oh, you're saying that he's cherry picking because he has to check every engine. Yeah, I mean he's obviously an amateur. He's obviously an amateur. Um, like I mean clearly this is not like his professional job or something. But like if, if that's true, like isn't that going to take like like let's just say theoretically Fide wants to do do something like this. Uh, they're going to have to take literally every. Isn't that going to take them like a year to like actually compile all the data from like every single engine and everything else or am i just completely crazy for thinking that okay here's empty because we're bringing the information from eric guys so here it is hans niemann since 2018 okay here we have all the data the tournament okay. that he played uh, how many rounds it had uh the, the number of it the doesn't round, take long with uh, who was playing okay, white so I'm just, in this case crazy. Neiman, okay. here we have him playing against shelev oberoi and we have the result we have the elo which is the rating the player rating how strong he is you could okay. do it in like probably then, a few uh, weeks black player mm. uh, elo which is the rating is, is the same thing um and then the number of moves the game had and then okay. we have it, the average centipon loss. So in average, this game had 39 moves. In average, um, Hans Niemann lost 22 centipon uh, loss per move, okay? okay? And here the black. And not only that I bring in this spreadsheet, but also the evaluation list by Ply. Okay, Ply is a half move. So every half move, what was the evaluation on the game? And also okay. the vector with the values of the centipon losses for every, every, every game, okay? All right, and with that in hand, we are able to uh, go uh, with a study like this that I'm going to show you now, which is the... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're right, though. Again, I'm not a data guy, so I don't know, but I would assume if you use the same engine, like you literally, I don't know, use like Stockfish 12 or Stockfish 14, whatever, Stockfish 17, whatever you use, it sh like, I know it's going to be different because Stockfish now is better than it was three years ago, but I, I assume well, still I have, it should be um, comparable. For example, this here. Yeah. I have every move here, so I, I have okay. hidden the the... The, the values it's still a good it's, starting it's point just giant okay. it's just huge but we have every every cell here is the centipon loss uh, okay. from um from a game so every row is a game and every and every column is a, a move hans nima made and the evaluation of centipon loss okay this is huge this is huge this is for every game and I made this study separate from uh, rating tire, okay? So this is for uh, Hans Niemann 2300. 20, uh, and what are what what this this uh, spreadsheet shows? Like okay? I, I mean, I don't so, I don't understand this, but like, and I'm no data guy, but this this looks like a lot more complex. This looks legitimately complex relative to to all the other all the other base. This does look much more complex. It shows we have classified we have classified perfect moves, excellent moves due to uh, in, in the in the so the, those are tires uh, regarding the centipon loss, but that's not what we want. Also, geez, Actually, how, how, this is how many freaking rows does he have? BS, B, BX, like, geez, this is like this is like the sixtieth row. It's probably gonna go over like another like hundred rows or something. Jeez. We want to do uh, something different. Uh, it's it's here what we want, okay? Jeez. We want average centipon loss. This is a simple average of that of those values. Oh, columns, yeah, loss. columns not. And here is the right, standard yeah. deviation of those. Uh, yeah, where's the chart? Losses, pie okay? chart? I agree. So like, why yeah, do, why are like... we calculating those averages? Uh, I'll show you why because it's a very known relationship. There is a very known relationship between uh, the average centipon okay. loss for a player and the rating of that player. So it's 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 okay. really logical. So uh, the more advanced the player is. The lower is the centipon loss, the average centipon loss from that player. It means mm -hmm. that he's gonna make fewer mistakes and more uh, accurate moves. Okay. Okay. And it's a very known relationship. And it, we we even have uh, good material here for this. Let me take a look at that. Uh, there is also uh, some people try to make sort of a kind of a table here. I'm trying to show you. Um, here it is. Okay. So we've already seen this though, right? I feel like I've already seen the ACTL. It's a chart uh, showing that uh, uh, according to your level, you should have an expected also, by average. Also, that's very insulting to monkeys. 300, oh, sorry, you can't see it. Very, very, very insulting to monkeys, by the way. Very, very insulting to, to monkeys for sure. That, you know, it's like they, they have no ELO and like 300 is the expected ACPL. Very insulting to, to monkeys. Centipond loss, okay? Not, you cannot look at only to one game because, uh, you know, one game may have some Especially because once upon a time we, we were monkeys, right? Once upon a time, I should look at his next video. Okay, there's there two videos. The beginner may, have, may do after. you know a perfect game, and sometimes the grandmaster is not in his best day. So no. uh, you cannot uh, only no? look only okay. uh, to one game and say what's the rating, uh, and 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 you really make sure this relationship exists. But when you look at you know uh, many many games in a row, then you can of course you can show me any any 100 games from any player, and I can tell you with a good good accuracy what is his okay. ELO, what is his rating. Okay. Okay. So fair. that's the okay, base so of let's the just get to, let's get 
to the mean. And what did I do here? So I have um, uh, split this analysis uh, from 2300 ELO for Hans Niemann, 2400, 2500, 2600, 2700. And I have measured all this average um, centipond losses. Okay? okay, so divided by those rating tires. And I have made the same for good cash. And I'll I mean, show I mean, you the, the result. The thing, though, is like, to be fair, he's a data scientist. So like, I actually, even though, even though it's like very, very boring to listen to, like, it feels like he's trying to explain it. it. It does feel like he's trying to explain it, though. Even if it's very boring, you want him to get to the point. Uh, this is the good cash results. Okay, so this okay, is very so good. Let me, let me move my cam, actually, because for this, we, we, kind of, we, we kind of need to see. Um, we need to see what the chart is saying. Okay, I'll leave myself. Uh, where can I leave myself? It's very hard. I guess I'll leave myself up here for now. Um, yeah, let me make myself a little bit smaller. So this is the Gukesh average cent cent upon loss for rating. So let me let me try to let me let me try to understand. So it's saying like okay, at twenty three hundred, it's he's fifty six. So this is this is bad. Which it's like I don't know what it should be. Or, or what the average is then as he gets 24 it goes down to 46 okay it's 2500 43 that's actually maybe there's no big difference that strikes me a little bit surprising but okay 43 30 and 39 69 oh wait no sorry wait red is, sorry red is the standard deviation so gukesh okay so gukesh gukesh is a boss right so gukesh is a boss so he's, he's at 31 versus a 56 standard standard deviation so like you already at 2300 he should be showing signs that he's going to be a great player right so it's 31, 27, 24, 22. Okay, so this makes sense. Beautiful, uh, this curve. Because here we can see that Gukesh at 2300 okay. level, 2300 level, here's this, uh, right. this scale. Uh, so Gukesh had an average centipon loss for all his games, for every okay. move in, the, in his 2300 to 24, 2300 uh, to 2400, 31.2. Uh, average centipon loss. Okay, fine. Well, as okay. he's getting better, as he's getting down. better, okay. uh, and now he's in 2400 rating, going to 2500 rating. Wow, he went down four percentile points on the average centipon loss, which is amazing. He's doing an excellent okay. progress. That's why his rating is going up. Okay. And then he kept studying, he kept dedicating, and then in his hunt of um, 2500 to 2600 then he was even more accurate. So his centipon losses average decreased right, which, to 24.91. Which, which is, is how amazing. it should be. As you get and better, then you make less This guy is becoming a super grand master because in his 100 to 2700, 2600 to 2700, he was even more accurate, 22 to 54. That shows 9%, almost 10% difference okay. between the level that he was playing in 2300 okay. and then uh, the 26 to 2700. Okay? okay. And also Normal. the standard deviation shows that uh, uh, the standard deviation is a measure of how consistent uh, are the games. So sometimes you play a good game, sometimes you play a bad game. If you're an amateur, it will really, really uh, vary a lot. But uh, okay. the more professional you become in chess, the, the more consistent your games are and your results. So that means the standard deviation is lowering as, as you grow up in chess. Of course, here as the it should be. Also shows the same behavior. So, okay. yeah, so as you can see, what, what, almost what, 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 20 percent of points different? decrease in, in his consistency. So it in, in, in the variation, uh, indicating strong consistency here uh, for okay. Gukesh. Now let's take a look at the Hans Niemann. Prepare yourself to look at this flat lines. Flat lines, okay? So that means, that means Hans Niemann, uh, 2300, has had already already see, this here's, spectacular... here's what i don't understand about this chart what i don't understand is like why is the standard deviation different here like you got why is the standard deviation different at 47 to 54 like like i'm just I, i'm not as i'm not a um i'm not like a data scientist but like why is the re, why is the standard deviation different here if, if somebody's a science a scientist and they can tell me like why why is why are the, why is the red number different than it was before um oh it it means oh it, oh it just means his play is more inconsistent okay um standard deviation shows that hans level is not as not as um not as consistent okay okay but actually yeah like why is the 2300 is what 2691 so this but as i'm looking at this it's saying that the the cent upon loss is the same when he's 2300 versus when he's 2600 so i mean it should slant down versus being flatlined or something um but i yeah i mean i don't i of course i'm no data scientist so i don't quite get it but um he can explain it okay let's let's listen um average centipole loss of 26.91 and all he his way through to 26 to 2700 it changed one percentile point 
one percentage point. 20, 25. Okay, so it's one instead of ten. Okay. One and a half. It's really, 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 really strange. It's really, really. It. What? What is? What is? What is chart is telling us is, there was one day when Hans Niemann woke up. He was twenty three hundred. He woke up playing just like Magnus Carlsen. Um, and then he had the same consistency. Look at look at this consistency. His his uh, standard deviation, no so, difference. So Hans never got better. He's twenty seven hundred ten years ago. I mean, again, I'm not a data scientist, so I don't know. But that is kind of wild, actually. That that is kind of wild. They're they're saying he, ah he didn't gradually improve, so he was like basically twenty seven hundred when he was twenty three hundred. I mean, I I don't again. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm sure like there are other data scientists who who can probably answer. Um, Hans was born in 2700 is what this graph is saying who knows who knows you guys who knows yeah if he, if he, if he got a lot better over the board when it wasn't being played in the line, but Hans was not what was wasn't Hans like 2480 when the pandemic hit like 24 I, again I don't know I, I don't know I mean he's yeah so basically I, I'm not a data scientist so I don't know what he's saying but it sounds like he's basically saying that Hans was like Hans was 2700 when he was 2300 which is a bold claim. Bold claim. No difference. He was he had always the same consistency and always the same level, the play level, since he was 2300 all the way through 2700. That's a strong indication of cheating. That's a strong indication of cheating. You know, Fide, uh, Chess.com, I don't know, uh, Nakamura. Please look at this video. Please. <laughs> I didn't know he was gonna. I didn't know he was gonna shout me out there. Um, I, I didn't know he was, he was gonna call me out. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know, but like, this is the thing. Like, if if there are like even if there are data science who look at this, like, this is a big question mark because it feels like they're looking at every single game. It does look like a. Um, I, I will watch next video too. Bad news is that I don't understand the video. I'm not a data scientist. Again, I don't. I, I mean, I don't really understand these numbers. But at the end of the day, I feel like the thing that matters most likely is what is what is the graph? What is the graph? Like, is, if you look at like what I want to see is I want like again. I'm sure he doesn't do this, but I want to see is he going to show like myself for example when I had my gap up. Now again, when I have my gap up or when like Fabiano suddenly gaps. I mean, Fabiano maybe doesn't gap up. There's another video. Okay, fine. All right, then let's just let's spread just get the next one. This news okay. to the world. You can you can make this analysis. You can you can replicate this analysis. I'm putting yeah. here in the link. I mean, if if this isn't GitHub, anybody can take this and, and see if they can replicate the analysis. And if they can replicate it, I mean that lends credence. But again, I'm not I'm not a data scientist, so like I I don't know. On my script, the database, okay, uh, the results, uh, the spreadsheet. So you can yeah, but make. Gukesh is one guy, you guys. Gukesh could obviously have like different improvement. All these things could be different. Like all these things could be different. That's the thing. So like, if he shows like five charts of like Noterbeck, Kamer, or I, I mean, I don't know myself, Magnus, whatever. When we had our big gaps, I mean that that's. I, I feel like you know the big one to compare to would be Magnus because I remember I remember this very well. It was 2004. I played the FIDE World Cup in in Tripoli in Libya of all places because FIDE finds a way to have events everywhere. Um, but like if, if I if I, if I look at thank you so much to Global Happiness Poker for the Radio 24. If I look at um if I look at uh if if I look at Magnus like I remember 2004 he played Levon in the FIDE World Cup an event I played it and like he took Levon all the way to the end like in 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 tiebreakers Levon barely won that match and I wonder because I feel like Magnus just went straight up like i want to see will it go down he will in the next video okay all right you you can you can check yourselves you can okay. check yourselves you can you can do the same steps that i did and you can replicate uh the results okay so okay so let's see the next uh, this video is beautiful then. this is beautiful this is beautiful okay so i i just i just hope i could after all those days with the help of all of you uh to bring some light on this on this matter uh since the beginning i was the only one uh, i was i was hearing cheating accusations and i said Please don't do that. You're we saying that I can see it in the video link? Is there is there a link? Wait, no, this is just the YouTube. I don't see the actual, um, I, I don't see the actual uh, link. So maybe if somebody has it, I can maybe open it. But anyway, um, all right, it's in the description. Oh, the spreadsheet link. Um, let me move this off before I accidentally leak my email. Okay, so, all right, I guess I guess like. Okay, what am I supposed to go to? To well, let's let's watch the videos first, and if I need to, if I need if I need to see, I'll see it. But uh, let's let's just finish. Don't have uh, any any evidence yet. Please don't do that. And then many people say you are defending Hasniman, and I'm, I know I'm I'm defending the truth, but many people didn't believe me. Many people said you are defending Hasniman, and sometimes I found a little evidence that could cheat. And then some people, yes, he's accusing Hasniman. 
No, I'm not. I'm still checking the facts. I'm still checking the facts. But now we came okay. into this after really a long journey, lot of efforts, lot of work, and it, and there it okay. is. You can replicate it yourself. Okay. So now I can very, very, very strongly have my opinion that Hans Niemann is cheating since 2018 or even before. But since from he was 2300, for sure, for sure. Okay. Okay, that's it, guys. So thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please let okay. me know if you have any doubt. And what, what's the next video? Let, let, me, uh, let, let me pull up the next video. Um, this is the next one, right? Let's watch this one. Hello, chess fans. This is me again, Rafael Leite from Canal Xadrez Brazil, with his, okay. which is one of the main uh, chess streaming channels in Brazil. And I'm here to present you with uh, uh, it, more If data. he's defending the truth, why is his only possible conclusion cheating? As I see it, he's basically saying statistically it's impossible. Now, again, I'm not a data scientist, so I don't know what the numbers are, but, um, but let's, let's concerning watch Concerning that Hans Niemann's controversy. So I have made a study, yeah. so a little bit of my background. I am a data scientist and also production engineer, which is a streamer. So very soon, write uh, statistics. So that's data from uh, it, the rating that the stock figures career against. Okay, let's keep going. About that really a correlation between rating and uh, accuracy. Okay, so let's show that, and okay. uh, there is, okay? So uh, for this study, Whoa. we have uh, gathered data uh, from all those giant players, Magnus Carlsen, Arjun Erigaizi, Alireza Firuja, uh, Fabiano Caruana, Pragnananda, Gukesh, Vincent Keimer, and, and, and the list goes on. Okay, so those are the players, not one or two players, um, but now really our database is really, really getting, uh, <laughs> it's getting started, okay? The chess database is it's huge, a lot but of freaking this is already, names, already uh, very, very relevant data okay so let's move on to the next um uh, slide where we have drawn this beautiful okay. beautiful finding for chess okay there is a correlation between the rating of the player okay the the elo the, the rating and the accuracy okay and how do we measure accuracy okay well we have this measure which is the average uh centipon loss okay so we are measuring okay. uh the evaluation from the computer from uh that move from a specific move in a game and, and it's saying that uh, the, the evaluation of, of that move, and then we compare to the move that was actually done by that player, and this difference, okay? This is, this okay. is measured in centipunt loss. You can, mm -hmm. you can never make a, a move, uh, virtually you can never make a move better than the engine. Uh, as human, you can at most do a move with the same best evaluation, and rather than that, a lower, an inferior move. So the difference between the computer move and the move that was actually played is, is measured by centipon loss. Okay, 100 mm -hmm. centipons, it's like one pawn. Okay, okay. Uh, so yes, we, See, we, we so, have a so, strong- So it works the exact same way as a basic evaluation. Like if I, if I turn on, if I open chess space and I turn stockfish on, it says plus 0 0.5, that's half a pawn. So okay, that makes sense. Correlation between the rating of the player and the average centipon uh, loss. This is huge finding, this is huge finding. And also another very, very important huge finding here is regarding the variance, okay? So okay. How, how, how is that player considered Consistent. Well, is is that rating um, uh, and and consistency uh, related? And yes, it's shown here, and we we can measure consistency by uh, measuring the average, the the. Um, the standard deviation, the standard, devi standard deviation uh, um, uh, about the moves from the moves which was uh, were played in the games. Okay. okay, so for every game. Okay, so now uh, we considered more than four hundred thousand data points. Okay, so many, many, many. Moves. Wait, does that does that mean that does that mean you use four hundred forty one thousand eight hundred eighty games as his data points? Because that's like a lot of freaking games. Is that actually true? Is that what that means? Does that mean he went through 441,000? Oh, 441,880 moves. Now, I'm no good at math, but let me assume that an average chess game goes about 45 moves. That's how, how many games is that? Oh, oh, you, you, uh, we already know. It's 882 games. Okay, so it's 882 games. Um, all right. I, I mean, that sounds like a small. To the left is the games. Ah, uh, sorry. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry, sorry. 882 and then 1.308. 2.0, what does, yeah, eight, eight, I don't understand this. So two, that's 2,460? I, I mean, I, oh, okay, like 1,308 games. Okay, so, that, oh, that's a comma, not a point. Sorry, I'm, I'm an idiot. That's a comma. I'm sorry, that looked like a dot to me, so I'm losing my mind. Okay, so it's 1,308, 2,000, 2,566, 2,460, 13, 21, 4, 12. So, I'm, again, I don't know what the set is, like what these games are from. Um, but anyway, let's keep going being analyzed oh actually no it is a dot because in brazil yeah like in south america and like in spain and spain and italy and these countries they use a dot not a comma that's right I by forgot. stockfish right. and every, right, every that guys. point was measured by stockfish which means, which means applied to every half move every move that was made okay. by a player 
was considered here uh, from, to, from all those players that we, I showed you in the beginning of the video. So here we have it, a very, very significant analysis and significant results. And it shows that for a 2200 uh, rated player, the average centipon loss is around 39. Okay, so every move he, okay. he does is expected that he will lose about uh, uh, 0.39 points in centipon scale. Okay, mm -hmm. so almost and half of a course, pawn. course, as the, the player almost half a pawn. That's a that's a lot. That's a big drop. Uh, point, point 0.39, which is basically around 40. That's a big. That's actually a lot. Is increasing his quality, his understanding more about chess. Then he make many mistakes. Okay, then he has better quality moves, and then he got extra rating points. He's performing well in the tournament. I know there's so 2200, but it still feels like a lot. And also regarding consistency, okay? So the standard deviation, the variation of the quality of your moves, they lower as you get, uh, as you become a better player, of all right? That's Makes very sense. logical. So you are more consistent. It's uh, uh, less common that you make a good game and then a bad game after the good game. And then you find a good move, then you make a blunder. So as you become more and more professional, okay, this kinds of situation this tends to This is a reference lower, to, yeah. I think this he talks obvious, about Hans. But what, yeah. what was not ob so obvious was the... the a linear correlation between rating points and those measures, which is a huge, huge finding. This is a game changer. We can use this for many, many, many things in chess, for coaching, for identifying the maturity of a player, the state mm. of a player. Is he going down? Is it time for him to retire? True. Is there a cheater? So this is indication of many, many things. And if it works, as he's absolutely many, many. right. This opens. Okay, if, he, if he's huge, right, huge I mean, like, like if he's right, I, I mean, if he's right, then basically he, sh he should look at, uh, he, he should look at, um, you should look at Vichy, and, and it'll probably say Vichy should retire. Right, so this is a huge finding, and here for the statistical guys, okay. uh, we have the correlation matrix, and this is this is showing dot nine nine. This is ninety nine percent correlation. The minus signal here represents that uh, this is inverse uh, correlation. So the more, the higher the rating, the lower this the average centipon loss. Okay, so you will uh, you will be more accurate. Okay, and the same the same goes for the. Um, uh, standard mm -hmm. uh, St. Paul laws, okay? There's a strong, strong correlation, 99%. Okay, so this is beautiful, isn't it? This is beautiful. This is a huge finding. Uh, okay, and now let's take a look at that. How does that okay, apply in the real okay, world? Oh, let's look at Gukash, this prodigy, 16 years old, Indian guy, which is really, really playing and, and, and growing uh, really fast. And it's beautiful to see uh, this talent. This is a great talent. And when we look at all his games, we're, we're, we're talking about 600, more than 600 games, more than 24,000 data points analyzed, okay. okay, to bring this data here, uh, which reasonable. shows the consistency of the player, uh, not consistency, sorry, the average centipon loss. And we can see that when uh, Gukash was 2,300 guys... I know, 600 games seems like a pretty solid data point for, for Gukash. He was like more than 30... Uh, centipon average uh, loss. Yeah, okay, okay, the average centipon loss. And, and then as going he down. is yep. getting better, this uh, this data from Gukesh careers uh, career also is linear related. Okay, as we can see here, as we should expect from our previous findings. All right. So mm -hmm. this is a perfect perfect line for Gukesh. And as we can see, uh, he he's, he reached twenty seven hundred. Okay. Rating. No, but you guys, when you're saying he's look for outliers, I mean the thing is, th what everybody has been saying is you have to compare Hans against the other rising juniors. That's the reason it's like using Gukesh. Um, I, in this in this case, it's not about like trying to find. It's not. It's, it has nothing to do with like Gukesh being a, being like an outlier. It's the fact that everyone says like you have to compare him to like Noterbeck, Gukesh, Kame, or all the other junior players. That's where it's coming from. And now he's like um. Near to 22, 22 cent pawn average cent pawn loss, which is huge. Remember this number. This is a magical number, okay? 2,700 player, super GM level. It's around uh, 22 cent pawn average cent pawn loss, okay? Uh, which which was stated here. Let's go back, step back. Only for a while, we should expect 22 for a 2,700 player and 38 for the standard deviation. Let's look at Gukesh again. And yes, okay. here it is, very near 38. So it really shows that Gukesh is a 2700 player. He's definitely a super good master. And his data is showing uh, that it's according mm -hmm. to what is expected from our study. Okay, huge, beautiful. Uh, it, this, this is beautiful. Let's take a look at Vincent Keimer. He's another ah, uh, giant. Uh, okay, so Leo. it's not just Gukesh. Okay, it's not just Gukesh, though. He does it with other people. Okay, so... Okay, all right. Giant, uh, this uh, prodigy from Germany. 450 games, and he's not also as many very, games, very linear. 96% but... uh, linearity uh, correlation here from okay. the, the, uh, his average centipon loss and his rating. And also good, good correlation between his rating and standard, uh, aver uh, standard deviation for centipon loss. Okay, so that's really uh, as, as expected. And again, he's below 22. Good, grapple below fine. 22. So yes, he's very, very... He's oh, by the way, look at Vincent. My gosh, what a boss. Like, it's very small, and then it just... Then he starts 
starts playing like a superhuman, right? Like, it, it, like here, like not to like look for weird things, but it's crazy. Like here, it's just small. It's like thirty to like twenty nine, and then boom, right down to twenty one, like a boss. Super good master, and here it is uh, around forty, which is truly good. Thirty eight for uh, super GM, so really near thirty eight. Very good here for Vincent Keimer. Right, let's take a look at the Pragnananda, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda, the Indian prodigy, another Indian prodigy. Mm -hmm. And here he is, very, very linear, uh, because he's very young, and we have data here from a uh, few games uh, when he was like 20, uh, 1800, 1900, 2000, and the correlation uh, gets a little bit disturbed, but still 90% correlation between his rating and uh, average. Okay, so the correlation, so basically it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the slant, it's the shape of the, shape of the, uh, the graph, and it's like the correlation. Although, again, these points are kind of off though, right? I mean, isn't this, shouldn't it be like up, down, up, down? Like it's not, a, I mean, I, I'm, I'm no data, data guy, but like, shouldn't it be like up, down, up, and then slant? It's not like straight slant, slant downwards, no? It's called a line of best fit. Oh, oh, so it's the line that best fits the data. Okay. Okay, it's, it's the line that best fits. The, okay, again, I don't, I, oh, but you're actually right. He's 1800 here, so it, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't quite work. Be okay, so like you're right. So it's like you're right. Actually, no, 2300. It does work. From it does work from 2300. Actually, 2300. It does work. Let me let me go back to the uh, Kamer one. I just want to go back Kamer. Let me go back to Kamer. So Kamer, yeah. So Kamer, it's here. It, it, yeah, it's not it's not a perfect slant down, but it's still it, the trend is correct. Okay, the trend is correct. Okay. Really because he's very young and we have data here from a uh, few games uh, when he was like 20, uh, 1800, 1900, mm -hmm. 2000, and the correlation uh, gets a little bit disturbed, but still 90% correlation between mm -hmm. his rating and uh, average centipon loss. And if we, okay. if we remove this, this data uh, and only show 2200 up, this is a lot more correlated. So, but this is clearly linear and um, more than 700 games, more than 28,000 data points. Okay, and we normal. have this beautiful okay. line when, uh, where um, Pragnananda had 30 more, 30 more uh, centipole, uh, average centipole loss, and now he's there around 22, which is expected for a Super GM, remember mm -hmm. 22. And here, 38, uh, here it is. So confirming the standard deviation here, the average standard deviation for centipole loss, um, around 38, which is expected okay. for a Super Gunner Master. Congratulations, Pragnananda, you're clean. Uh, and, and now let's take a look at this Magnus, giant guy, okay. Magnus Carlsen here. Every, has, ha, have you ever heard about Magnus Carlsen? Okay, I, I bet you have. Uh, Big and drop here, from uh, 25 his, to 26, um, wow. His that's results Huge also drop. show a great, great correspondence between his average centipon loss and his rating. Okay, this is show linearity, and he's yeah, this is linear too. Yeah, this is linear points. also. He's below. He's around seventeen points uh, average centipon loss. Uh, this is amazing. This is really amazing, and. Um, also, we can see that the standard deviation has also a correlation, strong correlation, and it, it is below 35, it's 33, possibly. Uh, this is really, really huge. Uh, so that's Magnus Carlsen. Uh, here we have Caruana, look at this, okay. a almost perfect line here. And uh, 1,000 games for Caruana, more than 40,000 data points, and good correlation for both games. CPL and STD CPL. Uh, and as we can see, uh, Caruana is below 17. <laughs> wow, Average look at that, loss. This guy is a monster. And and also below 35, so this is another category. This is uh, more than super jam. This Again, is I don't know what the data points are, but this this makes sense. This does make sense. So like you see it, the the, the trend is the trend is correct. All points should be presented so you can see the error distance. Ah, uh, so there could be an issue. Okay, but I mean it makes sense though. It does make sense. Um, hundred plus. Uh, I think Caruana is not uh, twenty eight uh, plus still, but um, yes, he, he he has one of the most. Uh, so Fabian is going to go like this, right? It's going to go up in the recent like six 42, months. If I'm It'll go mistaken. back up like to errors. Um, and here we have here we have Hans Niemann. So until two thousand eighteen, uh, his um, his numbers shows really linear results. So when he was like two thousand. Okay, I don't like this because again, this is not using twenty three hundred. So I don't like this twenty eighteen. But I guess he's trying to show that it's like it's going to correspond and then it's not going to correspond at all like i don't like using anything before 2300 because that seemed to be like the baseline but anyway okay so this corresponds it goes down and down okay let, let's let's see and we had 44 uh for uh accuracy actually uh, looks, average yeah. loss and then he was getting better and here at the end at the end of 2017 it's okay uh he was reaching like 35 35 percent uh, ACPL 35, not 22, like Prognanand. But see, the thing like, is, you no. guys, if, if this is wrong, isn't it going to be on? Isn't the whole thing on GitHub like all his results, his conclusions? So like, someone should be able to check this and see if they if it comes out the same. 
because he's put this out publicly on on GitHub. So you should be people should be able to replicate this and decide like is this the case or is it not the case? Others, okay. But then five, he's a, he's a strong player. He's a, uh, getting near 2300 or something like that. Uh, and here also the standard deviation is getting better. He's getting more consistent. Still mm -hmm. very high, around 60, still very high, around 60. But yeah, he's a good player for sure until 2018, okay, which is in like okay. half of this chart of uh, rating growth here uh, in the screen. But um, uh, what, is, what is very strange is what happens after 2018. Uh, because there's no more correlation between uh, his um, uh, accuracy and his rating, okay? So uh, out oh, of a wow. sudden, okay. uh, let's go back here. He was around 35 wow. CPL, okay? Around 35. And now all of a sudden, he's 26. Whoa, uh, what, like what the heck? I mean, point zero point zero six and 0 0.53, that's crazy, jeez. That's, that, that's crazy. I mean, I don't know, but that, that's wild, actually. Wait, that's wild. There's like, there's no correlation at all, basically, right? There, it's like, there's no correlation whatsoever. That's, that's wild. That's wild. Oh, yeah. And, and so this is where, regardless of position, this is where it doesn't matter. Yeah, like, he could be off by a little bit, but yeah, this is, like, very wild. Um, wow. Okay. And when he reached the 2400 rating, his ACPL increased. What is supposed to decrease? So increased to almost 30, 28.5. And then it went back to 25. And when he reached 2700, he's still 25. Not 22 like Pragnananda, 20, 22, he's still 25. Very, very, very strange indeed. And when we look at the standard deviation, well, that's bizarre because the number is huge. This standard deviation shows that his moves have no consistency okay sometimes he play like a machine and sometimes he plays like a average grandmaster like an average grandmaster okay actually this number is supposed to be a 2500 player let's go back to the the first chart uh remember there's a number 48 and 25 okay let's look at here 27 47 very close this is what is expected for a 2500 player okay 20, so what, is, uh, what does it mean okay. when you look at this when you look at this data uh hans niemann's numbers shows numbers from a 2,500 player. And watch this first, and, and there are many things that are strange here, okay? So until 2018, uh, he was playing not, not like a 2,500, he was playing like a 2,300, 2,300. And then all of a sudden, since 2018, he started to play like a 2,500. And still, nowadays, he has, been, he has made no progression. Little, little, little progression. And he's still with 2,500 uh, uh, results, numbers. So as, as I understand this correctly, what it's saying is it sounds to me like he's saying that he's basically playing with the same variant. So he's like playing a lot of great moves. And like, it, it's almost like he, he, like he's still playing like 2,500, but he's 2,700 almost is what it sounds like, kind of. I mean, I, yeah, like I, I don't, I mean, that, that's what it, it sounds like. Kind of, like, I'm just trying to think about this logically. If I, if I play devil's advocate, I assume something is going on. Like, let, let's just say, for example, my rating is like, I don't know, like I'm 2,500. If I'm 2,500 and at the right moments of every game, I can pick the best move, that would mean that I'm going to be 2,700, right? Or not? I don't know. Like, if I play devil's advocate, like, again, we don't really know what, what the reality is, but if I'm going to play devil's advocate here and take that side, doesn't that, that would mean that basically, if I'm playing like a 2,500, I'm playing like a 2,500, but at all these critical moments, I just play the best move, right? That, that's what it would mean? Okay. Wow. Well, I mean, again, I'm no data guy, but we'll see. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's, again, I, I assume that the, the, true, the true data scientists will take a look at this. Uh, I mean, it's almost like impossible to not look at this, but I mean, who knows? Who knows? Um, I mean, yeah, maybe it's just not consistent too. Like you, you don't really know what's going on here. That's the thing. You, you, you just don't know. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. For the average antipon laws and for the standard antipon laws. So how the heck he, he, he achieved... 2700 rating with this with this performance this is truly odd this is truly odd so here are the conclusion guys uh let's let's wrap wrap it all up uh is there a correlation between those indexes average city point loss standard deviation city point loss and rating yes the higher the rating the lower you should expect for acpl and stdcpl okay with 99 percent correlation with a huge huge number mm. of data points all right so another conclusion talents really good and real talents reach acpl below 22 when reaching 2700 when becoming super jam neiman continues with a cpl of 26 
what should be expected for 2,500 players, all right? He has never reached 22, uh, like Pragnananda, Vincent Keimer, but, he, but still he has the same rating as, as them. Uh, talents yeah, arrive, the point. standard deviation, Sandy Bond loss, below 38 when reaching uh, Super GM level. Neiman continues with 48, 47, which is huge for a 2,700 player. This is expected for 2,500 player, okay? Um, Aqui, uh, here, here it is in Portuguese. Talents, uh, sorry about that. Talents decrease. <laughs> I, I have made this video for Portuguese channel today. So talents de decrease in ACPL and standard mm -hmm. DCPL linearly. Okay. Uh, so th you should expect those numbers to decrease linearly as rating grows. Okay. And Niman decreased ACPL and STCPL linearly until 2018. From 2018 on, okay, he made a leap in both metrics and kept them linearly regardless of rating range during four years, 2018, 19, more than four years. Still nowadays, okay? It's very, very odd. And anomalies, oh, here is also in Portuguese. Anomalies, okay? Neiman's data is growth, uh, rating growth, ACPL level and STDCPL by rating range are inconsistent with expectations and unprecedented in chess history, okay? Um, Bold claim Neiman's again. Level in Bold ACPL claim. And Bold CPL. claim. He's saying, he's saying uh, it's unprecedented in history. Again, like, my read of this is like, I'm not a data scientist, so I don't know how to work this out, but I assume people like at FIDE or, or people at chess.com or wherever are probably going to look at this and they're, they're going to see what they, they're going to see what, you know, what the realities are. Uh, STDCPL is still very low compared to all the players. Okay. Uh, so that's my read. what we conclude yeah, is that that's it. Hans Nemo, he, Hans Nemo is not a genius. Okay. He's a strong player. He's a grandmaster level. Maybe, maybe around the 2,500, maybe around 2,500. Okay, but then we come with these questions. What can explain a 2,500 level player achieve 2,700? Is it this, the, the high variation? Does that mean anything? Is it, is, is it any, any, any way correlated to, related to the fact that he, can, he cannot explain his games in an interview? Maybe it is. And what okay, this is should just, we search for? I mean, it's starting to get a little bit off track here. With, um, with the data that we have so far. So yeah, my friends, that's it. I hope you have um, understood this data. Okay, I have you. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope that somehow it comes to Fide. Maybe Fide starts to use. Yeah, it. I mean, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like again, I assume people like Ken Regan and others are, are going to probably look at this, and then we're going to see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. So they're saying Hans plays like twenty five hundred every now and then. He plays like a twenty eight hundred. I mean, as, as, that's the way I read the data. They're saying that basically the the way he plays the game, like if you play a forty five move game. It just means you're playing like 2,500 and they're critical moments. And then he plays like a 2,800, I guess. Um, but all right, I'm going to go use the restroom again very quickly. And then I think there's one more video apparently that he put out. Is there, is there one more video or am I, am I crazy? No, I, th I think, no, no, th these are just, these are just his videos. So, um, no, I, th I think that's, that's good. So I'm going to run the restroom. We'll be right back, you guys. Yeah, why someone would only fit a line with three data points? Because you're taking all the games and you put it into a point. Um, I'm a data scientist. Seems to me he's comparing Hans's numbers against averages. That alone doesn't tell us or how anomalous. I mean, I, I feel like what it's saying is it's saying he's an outlier. For sure that he's an outlier. That that's for sure. Beyond that, I mean, I don't I again, like not to be repetitive, but I'm not the data scientist, so I really I don't know I, I don't know what 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 it all means at the end of the day. Um Again, you, you think you, you I, if, if, if on GitHub you see all the players, like if you look at like if you look at the top 100 players and like his chart is the only chart that, that looks like this, um, then then I mean, I, I, I don't I mean, 
he still can't really say anything but we, we again you have no proof objectively so it's like is that circumstantial enough to like that holds up as potentially evidence like nobody really knows no nobody uh no nobody really nobody really knows so you, yeah you're saying it's conclusive i'll i'll there are obviously are many data scientists i'm sure there are people in chat who are data scientists but i'm sure there are plenty who are not who are saying they are as well so um it still doesn't mean he cheat yeah i mean this, i don't think we're ever going to know i don't think we're ever going to know because as, as i read it like yes you can have strong suspicions based on what has happened online you can have these strong suspicions based on based on what you're seeing about him being an outlier but at the end of the day there is the possibility that hans is just a genius he is one of a kind you can i mean you can say yeah like it's not realistic but there is always room for that that is always possible um that is always possible yeah if he's an outlier is not the most favorable view of Hans he's once in a generation talent I don't believe this, but it seems like a bad argument I don't know I mean it's again we'll see the data shows his rating does not match his performance yeah I mean we'll see we'll we'll see we'll, we'll see um we'll, we'll see what happens I assume we're going to hear something this week by the way I mean chess.com put out a statement I, I did not actually talk about that but chess.com did put out a statement saying they're going to be releasing something this week so I think it's going to be a, it's going to be like a crazy week. I assume something will come out and then who knows what happens. Will it be before the U S championship, which I believe is slated to start on Thursday. Will it be after the tournament started? I mean, I have no idea what's going to happen, but again, if we, if we assume that chess.com is going to release something this week, like they said in their, their tweet announcement, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a wild, wild week. So as I, as I would say, buckle up and get ready for the show.